What's cooking, everybody? Dave Altizer here with Kino Tika, and today we're doing our official DJI Ronin S review. We've had the DJI Ronin S now for about a month, and we're just now doing this review because I really wanted to get to know the gimbal before I gave you my thoughts on it. So before we get into a lot of the details of the Ronin S, I just wanna give a brief lesson in gimbals. The handheld gimbal has come a long way since the original Movi was first announced, and it really came from the technology that was developed throughout the years with drones. We needed to attach cameras to drones, and the problem was always without any type of stabilization, the blades of the drone going back and forth just caused a ton of shake. And so they had to develop these three axis gimbals to get all that shake out. It wasn't until FreeFly that anybody actually figured out what if we took that off and put handles on it and made it a basically steady cam replacement. So that's exactly what happened. FreeFly completely changed the entire industry with the Movi and DJ obviously took on their Ronin series of gimbals with the original Ronin to the Ronin M and now with the Ronin 2. And I always found that FreeFly had the best stabilization but usually not the best prices. Because they're designed in America, they're handmade by Americans, it typically was a little bit more expensive than the Chinese branded DJI Ronins. And what happened in the market was a lot of third-party companies started making gimbals and it wasn't until just a couple of years ago that people started experimenting with this handheld setup. Zion Crane, of course, is kind of the main competitor to DJI with the Ronin and they have amazing tools with the Zion Crane. But there's a lot of little things about it that make it eh, not the best. We're actually going to be doing a review of the Zion Crane on this channel, so make sure you're subscribed to see that whenever we do that review in comparison. A lot of companies have been waiting around for DJI or FreeFly to make something like this because the truth is a handheld gimbal setup is much more ergonomic than the two handle setup and having to use a stand to put it down. Movi created the little ring with the feet and that was really cool. You can now get that with the new Movi Pro. You can buy accessories for the Ronin to get that so you don't need a stand as much. And it is more comfortable to have two handles instead of just the one with one arm. But when you're using really small cameras, hand holding it is not that much of a problem. So DJI addressed that need with the Ronin S and here we are. It's been a long anticipated thing to have because up until now, there haven't been any real established companies that have made a really solid handheld gimbal. So with that brief history lesson about gimbals, let's talk about the Ronin S as a gimbal. Once you balance the DJI Ronin S, it's really powerful. DJI actually has a bunch of tutorials on their website. If you have never used a gimbal before, I highly recommend you check out those tutorials from DJI. And if you are using a bigger camera like the 1DX or the 1DC or a RED, check out my video. I actually did a very detailed video about how to use a 1DC on the Ronin S on my personal channel, so we'll put a link to that below as well. So at the end of the day, the only thing that really matters about a gimbal is the smoothness. And that's really the problem with all these Chinese manufacturers is they're just not very smooth. And to be completely honest, the very first Ronin, the Ronin M and the original Ronin, they're a little jerky and kind of crappy to be completely frank. That is not the case with the Ronin S. As soon as I picked it up and as soon as I dialed it in, I found this thing to just be super fluid and super smooth. Just a couple of years ago, to buy the best gimbal, in my opinion, the Freefly Movi M5, it costed like $5,000. The Ronin S today costs $699. I know that that sounds like a lot of money, especially if you're starting out, but if you really think about how technology has been moving forward and how prices have been going down, $699 is a steal for a gimbal that's this powerful. You also have this joystick here, which is great to use in a pinch. I actually found myself using the Ronin S kind of like a monopod or like a shoulder cam. Because we have this joystick here, we can completely move the gimbal in different directions and get the shot that we need without having to use the gimbal like a gimbal in all cases. That's what makes the handheld gimbal setup so amazing is the versatility of it. It's not only a fluid gimbal or like a steady cam, but it can also be used like a monopod or a tripod. One really great thing about the DJI Ronin S is the app 
we actually have a full featured app that lets us do hyperlapse, time lapse, motion control using the sliders and the app. And when we were shooting B roll for this video, we actually did a really cool experiment with the roll access. We had our friend Joseph use the app and do like a move while I was using the gimbal. It was really great. And if you have an extra hand like I did, it's actually really nice to have that wireless connectivity with the iPhone app. We took Joseph out on his long board and we ran around Nashville. We kind of got in trouble because we weren't supposed to be out there. But anyways, we did get some cool shots with the skateboard in the low mode in particular. And that is one thing that I really love about this handheld gimbal setup that you really can't do with the traditional gimbal setup. Once you initiate the lock mode here, you can actually move the gimbal in such a way. It's kind of awkward, but once you do, you can actually move it in such a way that it actually puts the camera like super low. And I could usually never get this low to the ground while still maintaining full control. I really love how easy this is to use and it doesn't flip your camera upside down. One of the downfalls of using a gimbal is getting footsteps in your shots. The first way to avoid that is to just roll your feet as you're walking and get nice fluid motion, as fluid as you can on foot. But another solution to that is using wheels, of course. Casey Neistat uses his boosted board Peter McKinnon uses his one wheel. I used my nickel board or penny board. We were in a little bumpy train and Joseph was skating around pretty fast. So I tried my best to keep up with him and it ended up looking pretty cool. We have completely fluid motion from the up and down access because I wasn't going up and down. I was just floating essentially on my skateboard. And then any other bumps or movement is taken out by the gimbal itself. We shot a variety of shots in normal speed and in slow motion. Obviously, if you want to have the most fluid shot possible, I would recommend shooting in a higher speed, like 60 frames per second or higher, I guess, if you wanna go super duper slow, like 120. We shot in 60 frames per second, and a lot of shots and that paired with the gimbal with a lot of movement with the water and with Joseph skating around as fast as he could really adds a ton of dynamics and really, really, really just boosts your footage up to be at that cinematic level. Obviously we wanted to show off the actual smoothness of the gimbal in normal speed. So here's some footage that we got of Connor hiking through the trails of Percy Priest. One of the things that makes using a handheld gimbal like the Ronin S unique compared to like the Movi or the original Ronin is being able to have that roll access, that spinny kind of shot. On previous gimbals, doing something like this was impossible because the gimbal itself was kind of hanging from above. And because the base of this gimbal is at a point where you can actually do a spin or a barrel roll, you can really get some dynamic shots. Now it's not something that you're gonna use on a constant basis. Obviously you don't wanna see things upside down all the time, but if you shoot at a high speed and slow that thing down and do that spin, man, that is like, that is really unique. There's no other way to get a shot like that by hand. Like. It's just impossible. We have three different modes that you can completely customize here. You just cycle through them with the mode selection. On the front here, we have a little trigger that if you double tap, it centers the gimbal. If you triple tap, one, two, three, it does selfie mode. If you hit it two more times, boom, it goes back to the front. And if you hold it down while you're moving it, it completely locks its position. See how the camera's staying completely locked? If I don't hold it down, the camera will follow the gimbal. So those are some basics with using the Ronin S. That's really all you need to know about it. We also have the ability to plug into different cameras. Right now, the only cameras that are completely supported are by Panasonic, the GH5 and the GH5S. And with the Panasonic cameras right now, you can actually use this focus knob. You just screw it in here and it'll actually control the focus of your Panasonic lenses. It won't use any other lenses. Um, it only works with Panasonic lenses right now. Built into the plate here is actually a Manfrotto plate. I do that in air quotes because it doesn't work on all tripods. It does work with the modern tripods from Manfrotto that allow you to kind of drop the plate straight in. But the ones where you have to slide it in, there's some areas with the DJI plate where it doesn't perfectly line up and it doesn't work perfectly. Also, the reverse is true. You can't necessarily always use a Manfrotto plate, like an actual Manfrotto plate on the DJI. It's not perfect. If you want the best plate for the Ronin S, use the DJI plate. If you want the best plate for Manfrotto, use a Manfrotto plate. They are sort of compatible, but they're not 
perfectly compatible, which is sort of a shame. I would love to only use one plate on everything. The battery life on the Ronin S is pretty great. Compared to the Zion Crane, it's technically worse. Uh, you get 12 hours of battery life, which in my opinion is very good battery life. But to a lot of the Zion Crane users, they say, ah, oh, it's worse. We get 18 hours, but I mean, like if there's anything more than four or five hours, you're like, you're never gonna run out of battery if you go with a full charge at the beginning of the day. I mean, if you're shooting for 12 hours straight, I feel really sorry for you. The one thing that I kinda don't like about the battery system here is the way that it works. I don't like how the battery system is the handle, but I also do like that it is the handle. I like that it is because it's really sleek, really comfortable to use, but I don't like that I have to take the entire handle off every single time I want to change the battery. Now, like I said earlier, it's 12 hours of battery life, so you're probably never going to change the battery. At the moment, there aren't any accessories for monitors. DJI told me at VidCon that they're working on a cheese plate that will go into the uh, screws here. That'll be great so that you can use all sorts of different monitors. Right now, I'm kind of jerry-rigging my small HD focus monitor on the handle here. And it ends up working really well because it's super lightweight. It's not taking up any clutter for the most part. I have a cable that just goes in there. Another accessory that is coming soon from DJI is a hand grip system. The handle system like this is nice and lightweight, really easy to use. It's quick to uh, pick up and go. But if you're doing really long shoots, with heavy cameras, having two hands instead of one, it's gonna really help distribute that weight of the camera and kind of give you a little bit more comfort. The tripod comes with the gimbal and one little thing that I love about the tripod is they actually put some really soft rubber on the handle here. I say handle because it actually feels like a continuation of the handle. It's round, it's really comfortable to hold. And with the Zion Crane, they ship it with a tripod mount, but the tripod is just like sturdy metal and it's sharp and pointy. And so when you grab the handle here, it kind of hurts. And I really love the extra thought that went into this little tripod because it really continues with this nice soft rubber grip. All right, let's just get this out of the way. The Ronin S is pretty heavy. Without a camera on it, it is 4.1 pounds, which is slightly more than the Zion Crane 2. For reference, the Movi M5 is 4.8 pounds. This is 4.1 pounds and it's much smaller. So that really makes it kind of a little bit of a crutch when you're using it handheld and especially if you have a big heavy camera on the gimbal. But remember guys, this is still amazing tech and to be completely honest, I was always using a Glidecam HD 4000. This is not gonna be as heavy as a Glidecam and you're able to put big heavy cameras on it so it's going to be lighter than a Glidecam which is not stabilized with motors, it's stabilized with gravity. So this is gonna always give you better performance than a glide cam and it's lighter than a glide cam technically. So I don't know, it's give and take. If you're not familiar with these other things that I'm talking about and you're just getting started with the Ronin S, I can see how you think that this is really heavy and unwieldy, but just take it from me. I've been doing this for 10 years. This is a very light setup. For example, all the shoots that I've done with this system have been pretty much all day long. When I was at VidCon, I had the 1DC with my 10 to 18 millimeter lens on it, and I carried it around with me like it was a Gorillapod, essentially. Yes, it was heavy, but what's great about this is I can set it down. I can rest it on my waist. But yeah, it is heavier than the Zion Crane 2, but it is more versatile than the Zion Crane 2. While we're on the topic of comparing this to the Zion Crane 2, I will mention one of the best things about the Ronin S is the build here with this back motor system. This motor here is typically right up here because that kind of makes sense from a gimbal maker's perspective. It's the most natural position to do it. So throughout the years, motors have always just been right here, which is unfortunate because it's right where your monitor is. If you have a flip out screen and you've got the Zion Crane 2 and the motor goes up on the screen here, it's not much of a problem because the screen flips out. But where it really gets in trouble is when you have a screen that is just locked like this. And then you can't see your shots at all and you're forced to use a monitor. What's great about this system is obviously the placement of the motor here being at an off angle. And I really love how genius this is to have the motor 
off access like that. Because the Ronin S is using the algorithm from the Ronin 2, this gimbal is very, very smooth. My problem with all other gimbals in the past has been, with the exception of the free fly system, gimbals just kind of have a robotic look to them. Even when you try your best to dial in the settings, it's just hard to get away from that robotic movement. The Ronin S, in my opinion, has really come up to where the free fly system has been in the past with its smoothness. In the app, you can adjust the settings for the smooth track, and I highly recommend playing around with that and just finding the best settings. I found that with the pan and tilt, setting them to a lower speed and a medium dead band really helps keep that fluidity when you're moving it back and forth. So in my custom settings here, I have number one set to really slow and smooth. I have number two set to fast and quick, and that's to help me when I'm trying to just get a shot and I wanna just frame it really quickly. And then I have mode three set to that kind of flippy, spinny barrel roll thing. Overall, the Ronin S to me finally replaces the Freefly Movi M5. I still do feel like the two-handed gimbals like the Movi Pro or the Ronin 2 have their place in higher end cinema productions. You can put an Ari Alexa on those things and attach it to wires and cables and put it on a jib and do all sorts of amazing things with larger setups. But the Ronin S for me is the best option because of its fluidity, its versatility with cameras. We've got an M50 on here. We can put a 1DC on here, a red, and the price point. It's $699. The competitor to the Ronin S right now is the Zion Crane 2, and it's $50 more expensive. The Ronin S, if you're starting out, is really the best option all around for a handheld gimbal setup. If you're new here, thanks for watching this video, and please hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more content coming soon that I think you will really like. I'm Dave Altizer. That is a World War II American flag. See you next time.